Hey, Money Guy family, it's your host, Brian Preston, joined by Mr. Bo Hansen. And we recently did a Tesla Model 3 series that you guys absolutely loved. Yeah, there were hundreds of thousands of views on those videos. If you haven't had a chance to check them out, click in the link below and make sure you subscribe to the channel. So we wanted to go a little deeper. You guys, so many great comments, and we're gonna use this as an opportunity to actually highlight some of those comments to go answer your questions, go a deeper dive on some of the features, as well as just to kind of let you know how awesome this car has developed over the three months that I've actually owned it. So tune in, a lot to strap in, or maybe I should say buckle up, because there's a lot to cover today. It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Let's jump right in and talk about some of these features that just didn't get enough love or needed clarification from our previous um, videos. The first thing I had was the backup camera. Oh gosh. You know, if there, there's the, the whole Emojicon where the guy is like this, that's what I feel like I need. So I want to demo what I'm talking about here with the rear view camera. We backed it up and there's the rear view camera. We go, but maybe you're freaking out because all of a sudden a song comes on where there's cuss words or something. Right. So you, you quickly turn it. Uh oh, camera rear view gone. camera is gone. Now in the last time we talked about this issue, I said the way you get the camera back up is I put it in park and then put it back in reverse right. and it showed up. Well, a lot of people had the courtesy to show us that in addition to doing that, so you put it in reverse, I'm going to change the song, oh, it goes away. A lot of you guys correctly showed that you could just hit the button on the far left there and it would bring the rear view camera. I do want to, so that I get to save a little face, I want to share that I was also right in the fact that <laughs> now, if we hit it into drive, you it see the, the there. camera yeah. didn't go away. It actually really stayed in place. So you'd have to either hit the X or hit the button again and it disappears. Yeah. If you make the backup camera go away, you can get it back, but then you have to remember to also make it go away again. That's exactly right. And here's one other point of clarification. I had several people in the comments who said, why would you need to touch any buttons while you're in reverse? <laughs> Obviously, you don't listen to, if you go listen to the top songs on, say, iTunes or whatever, if you look at the top 100, about 85% of them have explicit lyrics. So if you have the kids in the car and you're just listening to any music, it's not uncommon that a song's gonna come up that you're gonna quickly scramble right, right. to hit a button to change it. That's gonna make your rear view camera go away. So look, full circle, we've covered the rear view camera. It's for the kids, I think is what he's trying to say. <laughs> I wanna talk about autopilot. Oh man, this feature is awesome. And I, let me give you an overview, because a lot of you are like, because autopilot has gotten a lot of negative press. Sure. And I understand, and Tesla even, when you enable autopilot, it has all over it that you're quasi a beta tester. I think it even says you're, hey, this thing is not completely done. Sure. You're in beta mode, um, but they are gathering data from its use. So it is one of those things when you enable autopilot, you know that you're kind of, this thing is not truly ready to pilot the car automatically. So Heath had given us some comments saying that we should lose our ability to use autopilot. Because it's only meant for the express For a divided highway. So this is a two lane. Fortunately, since we recorded the last episode, they paved the road, so the lines could not be better. So right. let's engage this. You'll see there's autopilot. We're even gonna speed it up just a touch. I'm gonna keep it at 39. I think the speed limit's 45 on this road. You're doing this just to make Heath nervous right but, now. But look, we're not holding, the, I'm in control of watching what auto, autopilot does though. So I don't want Heath to think that we're, we're losing it here, but um, watch how well this does. I feel like there's even been an improvement since we're on a, a freshly paved road sure. with great lines. It, you're, you're going to notice, cause last time I think we got a little scared, yeah, a, little a little nervous. Yeah. Oh, and he crossed our lines. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm taking over. Yeah, that's and since we do have some sharp curves, I'll go ahead and even bring it down to 38. You can control the speed right here on the speed on the on the control stock. And also, look at this. If we were trying to control the distance between the car in front or behind us, you can go left or right, also on the same toggle. So you can see that's a three, a four, or a five. You can go all the way up to a seven. So I like to keep it about a four. Does this have a drafting feature in here? A drafting drafting would probably be a one, <laughs> which I don't know that it's safe. 
cool classic car. But see how well it's navigating. And I'm, like I said, it's controlling the speed. It's controlling the what we're doing. So I disagree with Heath in the fact that this is only for interstates. Because also, if we get up in here to Cool Springs and we have a traffic situation, you're like to, likely to see that it takes the stress, the anxiety off of you when the car is doing the stopping and starting and staying in the lanes without you having to get stressed out or because that, that gets tiring after a while. The example I like to give people, because I have another car that has, it's not called autopilot, but it's definitely used driver for assist. driver assist features. And it's an Audi, which is, is supposedly pretty much I on am, the technology. Yeah. Um, I would equate the Audi to, uh, and this is not in popular anymore, but when I was a kid, when we went on road trips, I got to sit in dad's lap and then kind of drive the steering wheel. Like on the road, like on the interstate. I know I'm older than you, Bo. This was not this was not considered <laughs> child abuse at the time. But back then, this is what you did: you rode in your parents' lap and drove the steering wheel as a highlight of your road trip. Yeah, that seems out there. Yeah, right? it's illegal. Now, but they also used to do this. Right, right. I mean, this, this was okay. that. This is going to go away. But it, so, I equate the Audi to being like an eight-year-old, a heavy eight-year-old sitting in your lap, trying to keep it in the lanes on the interstate. The the Tesla. It's more like a 12 year old. And now you're not letting an eight year old or a 12 year old drive your car sure. without you paying attention. So, I, I, but it's much better. We're coming up on a traffic situation over by the mall. Okay. So the car, look how it does a good job even when you have a lane going from two lanes to three lanes which to four lane to lanes. It stays right here. But look how we're in a traffic situation. It knows the cars in front of us. If you're in a school zone, well, look, we have some or, cars turning to riot, so we're it, about to ease up a little bit. Yeah. So it is kind of stop it's and go traffic. It's going to just do it. Stop and go. When you have a long line of cars, it's really that's when autopilot really shines and does a great job. Now, full disclosure, we're coming to a traffic light. <laughs> Once this car, it doesn't gone. know that it's red, so it's going to try to go. So I'm disengaging. <laughs> so it, the autopilot it does not know traffic lights. It spots cars. It does not do traffic lights yet. I will tell you that the Tesla does a better job of handling curves um, as well as just keeping you in the lanes. And then I even, one of the features, I did a road test recent, a road trip recently where we're going to show you, it, it was incredible to talk about the lane assist and the, the, the changing lane feature that is built into the autopilot. So watch this, I'm going to do a long pull. You don't do a short pull, do a long pull. Watch what it does to the lines. Make some li dotted lines. Nice. But, and I'm going to save you guys a lot of a lot of trouble. You see how the, the, the it just cut off automatically? Uh -huh. Forever when I was using the lane feature, I was automatically cutting it. I was over here manually. Because you thought it was going to keep moving you over? But then I'll go back over to the left lane now. So let's go check. It's checking for cars, by the way, when it, before it does that. And then it will cut off the blinker, even though I did a long pull. Huh. Now, if you do a short pull, will it still do the auto feature or no? No. See, it just three dots, okay. it's out. Same thing if I did left. It's not going to do it. You got to do a long so pull. So the car just got car over just in front of us? In front so of us. It was smart and, and, and did it. So really incredible how this thing on road trips, because we've had the, the, the pleasure of taking the Tesla on a, a Model 3 on a road trip. It was stress-free. You don't get to where you're going and feeling exhausted like you normally do on a road trip. It's really nice having this feature. Right now, and I think it's because of all the negative press, when you engage autopilot, you're gonna notice, it seems like every 30 to 40 seconds, it tells you to keep your hands on the steering wheel. Even Wait, if they're on the steering your wheel? Your hands are on the steering wheel, but it has to, what you learn to do is you have to give it a little pressure, just a touch, <laughs> just to say, hey, I'm here. You can take the blue screen back off. And, and it's just one of those things, it's, it's a little annoying, but I understand why Tesla is doing that with the autopilot feature. Let's transition, talk about, because there's a lot of comments and feedback on this blinker and turn indicator. <laughs> As Kristen explained, there is on the Tesla, there is a short and a long push or pull on the on the blinker. Uh, for short, it gives you the three blast, and then for the long, it actually you know keeps it locked in until you turn the steering wheel. And most of us are familiar, but we're used to on the long that it locks in place. The Tesla always comes back to the resting right. position. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a long pull since we're taking a left turn here. So you see it, it's locked in. And then as we go, it cuts off. You'll see when we straighten the steering wheel, it's gonna cut off. Right. 
But what I was trying to explain is that when you do a quick little lane shift, it's nice when you have, to, I'm gonna do the short, see how it's a little, and it'll do three blasts and then it goes away. But sometimes you accidentally, especially in your an aggressive driving situation or a defensive driving situation, but you're still following the rules and turning the blinker on, you'll accidentally go past. There's not much of a tactile feel difference right. between, and you'll see it'll just run, so you have to kind of counteract it. So, Kristen, thank you for the comments. I think that was very helpful, what you shared. And um, we can't help but heart everybody because we're Southern and polite. <laughs> So I, I, I'm gonna heart you as well for, for giving us that, that corrective comment. What's funny is then Kristen got trolled by some viewers and this was her comeback. This is like arguing to a potato. There's short and long turns. Every car, including BMW, will snap into place for the long turns while all model modern car have three blinker short bursts and that don't snap into place. Right. Tesla is just stupid to make both short and long react the same way with the same tactile feel with no snapping feature for either short or long. So I appreciate Kristen trying to come to our defense. And so Elon, if you're listening to this to make Kristen happy, it would be nice if there was some tactile difference in the short and long signal. And here, here's the thing, after you drive this car, because now we're on uh, three months of owning this Model 3, I have gotten used to it. That is not to say I still don't have mix-ups where when I'm just doing a <laughs> simple lane change that I don't actually push it into long turn radius right. and it's stuck you know, waiting for me to cut sure. it off and I, and I quickly correct it. But it is, you just have to get used to kind of like when auto, when you, you're showing autopilot that your hands are on the steering wheel, you just learn some little, little, you know, tips and tricks to make this system work a sure. little bit better. But we took so much flack <laughs> for this one feature complaint that I talked about, and that is the trunk. Okay. One of my nitpicks on my Tesla Model 3 that I love right. was I said I didn't like how we didn't have a power gate like the Model S has and that it was a little harder for especially for short people sure. to close this. So a lot of the people who commented on our previous series for the Tesla Model 3 said, hey, Brian, you didn't highlight that there actually is a handle for the trunk for the Model 3. And they're right. There is. If you look on the left and the right side, these are little grab handles that you can pull and this to, to help you close it. Sure. My complaint, and I know I'm gonna get some troll comments on this, I've already been called precious, is that the, the default action when you close the trunk for me is I grab and pull. Sure, which this, puts fingerprints on your Which car. does, I, I don't love that, but it's also just the feature you overhand pull. So if there was a grab handle that you grabbed and pulled, and I, neck, I recognize I'm nitpicking, but this is, a, this is just a little different, a little awkward, in the pool. That's all I was trying to, it doesn't mean that I'm not recommending the Tesla Model 3. I just, engineers are watching this, they do over the air updates. I just want this to be the best possible car that Elon Musk can envision and design. And this is a nitpick for me. This is something that I don't think that that is a normal pool. Plus when you do it normal, like I'm doing it just default, look, I'm putting fingerprints on the freshly washed car. That's precious. That is precious, isn't it? I do sound like a nitpicker. <laughs> We got some comments and suggestions that I didn't highlight the memory feature on this car as much as I should have. You know, it's not uncommon with most cars that you get one to two presets. So you and your spouse could have a preset. Right. And then the luxury brands, they might give you three. You know, so maybe a teenager. I don't, I don't, not that you want your teenager driving your Tesla, right. but what I like about this Tesla Model 3, and some of your comments kind of called me out on it, when you pull up this screen, you can see you have your name, you have your easy entry, which I'll explain, and then you have your spouse, like I set up my wife, but in your valet mode. But we could actually add, if we had six children, we could add six additional settings sure. on there, which is pretty incredible. And I like how when you set up, say, Brian, you also have the capability to set this feature called easy entry, which means that it, it, like if my wife's setting was way where you move the seat way up, you could hit easy entry. And every time she cut the car off and got out of the car, it would make it where next time I got in the car, it wouldn't be all scrunched right, up right, right. under the steering wheel because it would be an easy entry mode. We got another comment, um, and, and here, I'll, I'll just put, bring it up. Arnold Winters says, you didn't know what valet mode does. We're gonna put it in valet mode. And you see it says valet now. 
The cool thing you'll notice about valet mode is, well, that is not supposed to happen. <laughs> the commenter was right. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, guys. Oh. <laughs> Here's the truth. When you do a Tesla video, we were trying to keep it to an hour. Some things got cut. That's right. I mean, even the rear view feature kind of was an editing thing. Sure. So um, we couldn't cover everything, but I do want to bring, since since it was brought up to us by Arnold, let's talk about what valet mode, because valet mode is pretty cool in the fact that when you go to a restaurant, or it, just as the name implies, someplace where somebody, maybe it's just a friend is right. borrowing your car, and you want to control their experience. You want to make sure they don't get to see all of your content. You want to make sure they're not out there ragging your car out because they've heard about Tesla performance. You want to have some type of something to protect you. Valet mode is awesome because if you want to lend your car or if you do, just as the name implies, drop it off at a restaurant or at a park and ride, you put it in valet mode. And I want you to see what happens here. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that the frunk is no longer, or the front trunk, if you want to say it that way, no longer lets you open. You still have access to the charge door. You still have access to the to the, to the the back trunk. But if you but, have your iPad in your car or your yeah, wife's purse or something like well, that. And here's also, because think about the things like, normally you open the glove box, but notice the glove box is no longer oh, yeah. accessible but while it's in valet mode. So if you put your wallet or any other valuables, you could put them right there in the glove box. They're no longer accessible. And then think about this. If you wanted to say, maybe somebody got in here and they wanted to test and see what your navigation settings for going home, it wouldn't even let you. Like when I hit the button, the toggle button, they say navigate home. It's not even pull it, it up. It won't even pull it up because it's not allowing any of my contacts into the system anymore. If we were close enough, you know, this is a home link button. Typically when you hit this, it shows the doors for the different cars in, uh, that, that we have and it doesn't even light up. Okay, so it obviously, you know, you can't get into the front uh, and it shuts off some of the things like getting in the dashboard, but there's also like mechanical controls as well for valet, right? Yeah, it, it definitely limits performance. While we're in valet mode, I mean, while we're, let's, we're strapped in, let's, um, let me show you what I'm talking about. This car is known for performance, but okay. we're in valet mode, so let's um, go ahead and put it in drive. Oh wow, that's slow. I just gunned it. Normally in a neighborhood, that would be inappropriate, but I knew we were in valet mode. So like it doesn't have the same sort of takeoff and acceleration that you would normally have in the Model 3. And caps the top speed. I, I believe it caps you right around 70 miles per hour. Watch this, I'm gonna floor it. And it's still pretty good, but it's not what it what it normally is. Right. I mean, it, it, it's, it's functional. I mean, but it's just, it, it's taking the edge off and um, it also will cap out the top speed as well. So you don't want the valet pulling a Ferris Bueller day <laughs> yeah. off and taking your favorite car out and just ragging it out as sure. much as possible. So, um, but overall, I think it's pretty cool because like I said, it doesn't allow access to navigation, doesn't allow access to your home link. It, it really is a great safety feature to ensure that you don't, um, you know, have somebody take advantage of you when you're letting them use it. I didn't give enough love in previous videos to this sound system. This sound system that Tesla, now I, I have to give you some perspective. <laughs> I am the 16 year old that drove a thousand dollar car that had two thousand dollars worth of accessories, including <laughs> bazooka tubes, equalizers. So I love sound systems. <laughs> I am, I'm that annoying teenager that you didn't want living next door to you right, when I sure. was growing up. So I've always, every time I buy a car, I am the guy that's going on Crutchfield trying to figure out what I need to upgrade right. to make the sound system sound a little bit better. This is the first car I've gotten that I love it. I mean, I, I don't think there's, I don't feel there's the need to, to, to update the sound system. We have speakers, tweeters, right here by the sun visor. If you look down here by the side view mirrors, we have speakers right there. When you, we have speakers in the door, there's speakers in the back. This, this car has been awesome. I mean, I have no complaints. It has great bass, it has great treble. So you have zero desire to, uh, to go do anything aftermarket, add anything in. 
Uh, was that something that came based on the Model 3, or did you have to do a premium package well, to get the better realize, sound? This is a long range, and the way, if you're an early adopter, you had to do the long range battery with the premium package. And this car does have the premium package, which includes the upgraded sound system. So it is it is an upgrade, but I'm telling you, it also gets you these cool USB ports in the back seat for the kids. When we've gone on road trips, They've loved that they can charge all their gadgets with the USB ports. And there's plenty of USB ports below here. There's also a, US, you know, a cigarette lighter. Well, nobody calls them <laughs> cigarette lighters anymore. But there's a, an outlet that you can also plug um, an, a, you know, an adapter into right. to get two more USB sure. ports out of. So lots of charging capability. Tesla comes with Slacker Radio. Now, Slacker Radio right now is free as well as all your streaming and your over-the-air updates through the, the, the LTE system, it's all free. Now, I've heard reports that over the coming months that it's going to be for around $100, maybe even a little less than $100, that some of these services are going to cost that per year as an annual subscription. But right now, everybody who's buying, you're getting it free for life. And what I like about Slacker Radio is that it's unlimited skips, no commercials, and you have this button right here. As it plays music for you, you get to thumbs up, thumbs down your favorite music, and it creates this favorite radio. Now I'm gonna click it, and then I'm gonna pause so that we don't get in trouble. And you can see very quickly, <laughs> Guns N' Roses is the song that it chooses, so this is obviously a dad favorite, <laughs> but each one of the kids has put in their favorite artist because we've listened to channels. I have, my wife is a big Tom Petty, Tom Petty supporter. We've been to, you know, fortunately got to see a number of his com, com, you know, concerts before um, he passed away. My daughter is, um, surprisingly, she's eight years old and loves the driving beats of dubstepping <laughs> and Skrillex. So that's not a crowd favorite. So it, it, you'll understand why that makes this game even better. And then my teenage daughter actually loves Coldplay, The Beatles, as well as Queen. She, she's into those Cold classics especially. Queen? Yeah, she loves some Queen. So we have everybody in there, and of course I'm a Foo Fighters type person, or Guns N' Roses, so that's all built into it. So when we play the music game, since there's unlimited skips, we each get three fast forwards. So like right now, if it was my you know, youngest daughter's turn, she would not keep it on Mr. Brownstone. She would probably hit another skip, so we could hit another skip I'm gonna hit pause, and Megan you can see it's a trainer. Megan tra Trainer song. That's always a now. You realize it doesn't have a, a, the 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 thumbs up is not darkened right now. That means that I have not actually said I love this song, but it knows that we like Megan Trainer typically. So it's trying to the, the system is trying to encourage other music sure. that we might like. So she would if the kids liked it, we let it play, and then it changed turns to the next person. But what's fun about the game, and this is where the game of chance comes in and turns it into a game is that it's not uncommon that you hit it three times and then you get stuck with a song that you don't like. You'll also, since the last time we've done Tesla videos, you'll notice some of the screens have changed. That's all happened because the over-the-air updates, guys, phenomenal. One of the cool things that happened in a recent over-the-air update is that now you always can see cars in front of you. Right. But you'll notice you see cars on the on the when left you're on, now. When you're yeah. on a multi-lane, we're going in the same direction. It shows cars to the left, and if we had cars to the right, like I'll switch lanes. Let me accelerate, get over here. Now you're going to notice you see cars on the right, and if we were on like a three-lane, you know, a, an interstate, you would see them on both sides of you. So really incredible. Here's another thing, because I talked about in the first series about the blind spot detection, how I wish they were in the side view. And I right. still wish they were in the side view, but look at this. There, you should see, like if I want to come up here, oh, yeah, there's see, a how, little, uh, see how it bumper. lights up on the, the bottom right side or the bottom left side. Yeah, there. there it is, yep, right there. Letting you know that now is probably not a good time to get over. I want to tell you that I actually love these over the air updates. Um, I want to give you, and it also, this is a great way to talk about this, is that since we did the video, it was probably, I mean, we couldn't have planned it any better, Bo, is that probably a week after Consumer Reports came out and said they were not recommending the Tesla. Because there was some issue with the brakes, right? Well, the, the, the thing that got all the press was that they said the braking system for the Tesla was, was not good. Right. I mean, it was, it was like 20 to 30 feet 
longer than a, the, all the other cars in its class, and that was disappointing. They also then gave a few other corrective things that they said that they didn't, they felt like the control system, because realize there's no buttons in this car, it's all controlled through this big monitor that's right here in front of you, and they felt like you had to navigate too far into the system to get to basic controls like your mirrors, your steering wheel, and, and, and they felt like that that was going to be somewhat of a danger. So they, they, based upon those things, they felt like they could, know, they could not provide a recommendation for the Tesla. Well, Elon Musk in Elon Musk fashion turned a negative into a positive. And it, and it was truly amazing because even the editors of Consumer Reports said they had never experienced something like this, was where Elon Musk reached out to the editors of Consumer Reports and wanted to hear their concerns, thank them for providing those concerns, right. and then he said, I am going to quickly get this fixed. And they shared that sure enough, within a month, he had an over-the-air update that improved the stopping distance by just making some slight adjustments to the analog braking system to where it improved by 20 feet. And, and so, you know, historically, if you were driving an automobile and something came out that something needed to be improved or changed, it was generally like a recall. You had to take it into a dealership, you had to take it somewhere, get it fixed. With the Model 3, you didn't have to do that, right? Well, a recall is typically because safety is so dangerous that, you know, you've got to bring it in. That braking issue, even though it was a safety issue, it wouldn't have been a big enough thing to where you'd have to issue a recall. You right. just have to wait for next model year for them to come out with a better model with better brakes. This is the first time an over-the-air update fixed an entire fleet without a recall, without waiting for next model year. It was truly incredible. And here's another thing, talking about Elon Musk turning that negative into a positive. The other thing, and this didn't get a lot of press, was remember the seats and other things. It was talking about when you adjust the seats, the mirrors, or the steering wheel, you have to go too deep into the embedded system that it was clunky or not safe to make those adjustments on the fly. Let me show you, we are driving down the street I don't think I'm breaking any protocols by doing this. I'm going to slightly adjust the seat. Look at what pops up on the screen. Now you have a mirror mirrors. controls. You have the steering wheel controls. They pop up and now they've gone away. They pop up instantaneously. So you don't have to navigate through any of the menus that you normally would initially. It's all been updated and this was not there as of three to four weeks ago. This is all through over the air updates. The other thing I mentioned on the audio. This, these have changed. The way they did these buttons has changed recently. It used to be you had to go into a sub drop down menu. Now you just hit that note button there and it, you know, and it allows you to choose between the phone and other things. It used to be up, you know, tabs at the top there. Right. It was a lot, it was clunkier, it was harder. So the car is truly improving as, the, as it ages as you get more over the air updates. Transitioning into braking. Um, it was what regenerative braking continues to be the gift that just keeps on giving. I, I drove my wife's car last night to dinner um, for the first time in probably a month. And I will tell you, you get so used to driving this car. And let me to explain to you what I mean by regenerative braking. When I talk about regenerative braking, notice out the green means that it's using regenerative braking. When it's black, it means we're using battery power. Look how, since we're on a very steep grade, look how it is regenerating, the, is charging the battery by allowing the car to brake itself without using the actual brakes. But because we're on a steep grade, and look, there it is, once we hold the steering wheel, if we were, if we did a sudden motion where it took the foot off the accelerator, the brake lights would come on too. But the car is still in control doing a great job. That's why you'll hear people talk about with Tesla's, it's one foot driving. You very rarely engage the brake unless you're under 10 miles per hour because then a lot of the regenerative braking under 10 miles per hour kind of it goes away because sure. they want you to use your brake for those things. But you don't go through brake pads in a Tesla. I mean, you hear about people that go over 200,000 miles before they have to change brakes in a Tesla. It's incredible. And here's something I want, an observation of doing driving this car for a few months now. One of our co-workers is petitioning the local county government and city government to put in speed bumps out in front of his house sure. because 
people fly down this hill it's right by his house. Grade. It's a pretty steep grade. Now, I think, and this is me thinking the best of people, I don't think most people drive through neighborhoods thinking, you know what? I'm going to fly. I'm going to fly through this neighborhood. Most of us are just, you know, it's it's kind of gravity at work. You know, the, the, the big heavy vehicle starts going down the hill. You don't want to burn and ride your brakes. So you end up going faster than you're supposed to. You never have to worry about these things when you have a Tesla because in my own neighborhood, there's we have one woman down the street here. I don't want to draw too much attention because I don't want to upset her. But she's she's a she's a finger wagger. I mean, she <laughs> she lives at the bottom of the hill and she wags her finger at you every time you go by her as she's pulling her trash cans in or right, whatever. Right, right. And you're just like, man, she hates me and she doesn't even know me. I do not have that problem in the Tesla. I can keep it below 25 miles per hour just because the car naturally slows itself down when you take your foot off the gas. If you have a Tesla, you know what I'm talking about. Regenerative braking is world class. And that's why I was shocked when Consumer Reports brought up the braking. And, and that's one of the things, I never got clarification, but there's a lot of speculation out there in the Tesla family that I think that um, the Tesla guys, when they tested, I, I'm not so sure they didn't disengage the regenerative braking because they were trying to make this car act like a traditional car. So they disengaged some of the features that a Tesla has. So this would be more like a regular car so they could have an apples to apples comparison. Right. I think that's a little, if that is what they did, I think that's somewhat unfair to Tesla because this is the evolution of where I think when you drive a regenerative braking system car, you're like, man, why do more cars not have this? And here's the other cool thing. You feel a sense of, because you have an instant readout if your car is 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 building up, braking, and, and recharging itself, you're building up your battery when you're braking. Right, you're right. letting the engine brake itself. It's, it's just an incredible thing. And something that I wanted to talk about that we, did, that we didn't get to do just because it was so new to me at the time is that supercharger experience. We've done road trips in this car now, so I've now had a chance to go through um, and use superchargers because I, I have a charger charging um, a Tesla charger in, in my house. So you, typically you plug in at night and then you don't have to go right. use a supercharger. You don't have to go to a gas station. You, um, you just plug it in at night and you have a full tank of, or have as much as you want when you come out to the car. Well, here's what's cool. Uh, you know, I didn't know how Tesla was going to do this, but when you go to superchargers, now you can go, and the, the, the cool thing is my wife was kind of shocked by this. When you pull up to a supercharger, the supercharger and your car talk to each other. So the supercharger and the car actually communicate naturally. You notice there's no credit cards, there's no swiping. You just basically pick up the charge port, hit the power, it opens automatically, plug it in, we're rolling. You know you have a good connection when you see the green starts flashing, that means it's sucking in juice. Okay. But what I like is, and I looked at a lot of states around here, the only state that was a little different was California, but Tesla is really smart the way they've done this. They've encouraged, because they're trying to encourage your behavior with the pricing of using superchargers. Realize this car has um, like a 75 battery. You know, you, everybody, you know, the performance ones are hundreds, this one's a 75. Um, they, Tesla's policy is, is that the, the car and the supercharger know how much of your battery has been used up to 60 it's 10 cents per minute that's okay. pretty cool and it's downloading fast once you get over 60 um kill I, I don't know if i'm saying it right but kilowatts because i think we got some comments right, saying right, you know right. from our people know but it's kw um once you get over that it goes up to 20 cents and it, it might get a little lower a little higher in different states because sure. it varies by states and what the prices i think in in california it was just a straight 26 cents at all times so not cool to be in california if you're recharging through a supercharger um, and this also only applies to model threes because remember s's and x's get free unlimited supercharging. But it's one of those things where I thought it was pretty cool that they were trying to encourage, they're thinking about the fact that when you're refueling or adding energy, because I know people are gonna pick on us for saying <laughs> refueling, when you're adding additional energy to the car, they're trying to get you to get up to the 80%. Because if you do the math, 60 over 75 is about 80% of the battery. And that's the part that is the most efficient for it to charge without stressing the battery. Right. It's really smart. They've, they've thought through a lot of things. And here's the other cool thing. We went to Memphis from Nashville for a road trip. Had to stop at two superchargers, one on the way out, and then we charged right before we drove all the way back. Each time it was less than six bucks. This one I have from Jackson, Tennessee was $5.60. 
So I think we've we've gotten pretty close to as fast as this supercharger. I've actually, I've, we have six, I mean, this is a pretty full supercharger right now, meaning that all the, the bays are being used. But I've been on road trips where I was the only Tesla, like in Jackson, Tennessee, and we had download speeds of over 300 miles an hour. So we're getting around 268. But here's something that's kind of cool. You'll notice we've added 15 miles of range in a short period of time. We're, we were just at 40 cents, now we're at 60 cents. So it's kind of cool to watch this thing. We did the first 10 miles, we were, we were right at 20 cents. So um, it, it's really cool to see how cheap and cost effective it is to add energy and juice to the battery. So if you think about it, we did a road trip with the family for less than $12. That, that's awesome. That's really incredible. less than $11. That, that's pretty phenomenal, especially when fuel prices, because of where oil is right now, it, we're, we're easily over $3 sure. a gallon. So, so pretty incredible if you haven't had experience with superchargers. By the way, the system is going to allow you to pull up superchargers. Um, and you can, so you can see how close you are to the different superchargers. We're parked at the Brent one one, so we're at 0.0, .0. but it's gonna show you where the closest ones are. But when you click on them, it's going to show you what it, well, it navigates to the route, but when you you're at it, yeah, we're, we're here, thank you. <laughs> so, um, but what I like when you're at the service center, it tells you how many stalls are available. You can see the Brentwood one is very busy. We're all, you know, there's only one of six stalls that are available. And I also like when we were on the way on our road trip, we typed in on our, just on our, uh, you know, on the, the internet, we typed in Tesla Supercharger Memphis. Tesla Supercharger Jackson, Tennessee. And we knew where those superchargers were because they show up on the system. And w Tesla has set up a website for each one of the superchargers where it'll tell you what restaurants are around there, any attractions. Mm -hmm. So you can figure out, you know, your bathroom breaks. You can figure out what restaurants and food choices you have really cool so we felt like on our road trip it didn't take away from the trip because naturally we needed to take potty breaks right. and naturally we needed to eat so we just built our our supercharge our, our recharging around, around the, things, the, yeah. the scheduling of that so it was really cool long range versus short range version a lot of you guys are looking for clarification should you wait and we talked about how hey look tesla's going to take care of you if you can't budget don't squeeze so hard um, that you get yourself in some financial straits and right. troubles. But uh, I do think if your only difference in features that you're looking at is long range or short range, I'm gonna read a comment that we got from John Chang because I think he summed it up really well. It says, the 220 mile range for the 35,000 car means on a long, and he put in parentheses, 500 miles or, and greater, trip, you'll be stopping every couple of hours to charge for 20 minutes. That gets old fast. So if you anticipate making frequent long highway drives, don't get the base battery unless you have an extra gas car you can use. It's better to get the $7,500 tax credit now and pay an extra $1,500 to get the long range ver version. If you can stomach paying the $5,000 for the premium package too, and you put in parentheses, the sound system is great, You'll certainly use the phone console. Kids will love the USB ports in the back and everyone will like the driver profiles. Adjustable seats, the wood grain and the glass roof. I agree with all that. And then he says, but if not, renting a gas car for a few trips a year still works economically. Yeah, so if you have long range and you have the short range battery, you just go rent a car. And that's not that's a exactly right. You know, and I, I had a car, um, you know, most of both of our cars until this year, we had an eight year old car and a 12 year old car. Guys, I was renting cars on road trips because yeah. all of our cars had gotten to the age where they were safe around town, but they were not safe, I felt, for, for a long road trip. So I, I don't think his advice is wrong. So thanks, John Chang. I want to transition to navigation. I have a brand new car in the driveway that has navigation, mm -hmm. but it is, I don't use it. It's hard, it's not just, it's not user friendly to type in addresses. Mm -hmm. It, it's hard to use it, and plus Waze does a much better effective job with the traffic. Um, I use the navigation system in the Tesla. It Even is, over Waze? Uh, you know, what, I will have my, if we run into any traffic, and this does show traffic, by the way, um, we will, when I notice traffic, we will cross-reference with Waze. But I will, t and, and also I want to give one little thing, Waze does a better job during events. Like we had an event where we went to the Nashville Sounds game, but there was also a festival in Nashville that we had no idea. So when we tried to leave the Sounds game, 
some of the roads that we thought we were that Tesla thought we were going to use to go home were closed because they had police officers there, just, you know, pushing traffic a different way because of the, the shutting down of this festival. Um, the, the, we had to pull ways up for right. that. But everything else, this is flawless. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I love the Google Earth view that it has. A lot of people on um, the, the Tesla forums have, we've had some people that have been confused. A lot of these systems, their default is they always keep north, you know, is, is the default view. And so when you're driving west or east, you might be going left on your screen or right on your screen. And that gets somewhat confusing when you're navigating because it's easier if your car is always pointed always north going yeah. or going up because then you know left and right much easier. You can hit the button on the left there this this little circle and it always points you up it allows you to to, to adjust that yep. so i thought that was kind of a, a thing that needed a little clarification i haven't heard a lot of people on the videos talking about i did have one minor thing that i want to draw to the the tesla engineers attention as well as our listeners i think it is so cool and i originally thought I notice when you when you get instructions on your navigation because by the way I don't type in address uh, addresses on the navigation I hit the button on the right and just say navigate me to and it does it even like the sounds game I mean restaurants I don't I think I might have only had to type in addresses once in the three months that I've used this navigation system a lot so it's kind of cool that you type that up but you'll see the the, the directions pull up right here on the right side but they don't have exit numbers when you're on interstate. There are no exit numbers on there. It just says we're gonna get off at Mallory Lane. Okay. No exit number. She said take exit 68B on the right to Cool Springs West. So she knows the exit number. She knows it's exit 68B, but yet nowhere on here and, and look, we, we only went 1.7 miles to get to this restaurant, but when you're on a long road trip, it's nice when you, especially when you're transitioning like uh, where multiple interstates are converging on top of each other, it's nice if you know the exit numbers so that you can navigate even easier. And I'm a numbers person, so I like to actually have the feedback of the numbers. So since they know it, it'd be nice if it was something that was easily accessible. I'd be willing to bet that's gonna be an over the air update problem. Oh, for sure. Here's a, here's a funny one. Um, there's a, a funny little video that's going around. I don't know if it's all over the nation or here in the South, but it's talking about how Southerners need a polite button, a polite horn button. <laughs> you know, when you're trying to, to tell that annoying person that's in front of you that, hey, just can you move? You know, the light's or green. The light's green, yes. Let, let's, let's, let's move it on. This Tesla, <laughs> the, the horn, unfortunately, doesn't have a polite setting. You know, and when I say a polite setting, I mean like, it's nice when you see a neighbor or a friend, you can go, Hong Kong, you know, you just give it a little quick little push. And, oh, Hong Kong, show me that move again. It's just a little push, you know, and, and I'll, look, I'll do it and I apologize, you know, but you, you see, I'm pushing it and it's not doing it. You gotta really give this thing a go. I mean, it's a, hey, get out of the way. So, I mean, that's that's not polite. So when you see neighbors, you find yourself in this awkward situation where you, you're waving, but you want to give them a little tap and it doesn't work. And then you also find yourself at the situation where it's a complete stranger. And you just want to give them a nudge to, hey, move right, out of right, the right. way or go because the light's green. You seem like you have all of a sudden turned into somebody from... Uh, uh, the Bronx. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You know, not to, not to pick on our listeners in the Bronx, but I think you guys would say that y'all y'all are pretty direct, and um, you know that's just not the Tesla horn. So I don't know if I don't think you can do that through an over the air update. But the Tesla, um, I, I don't know what we need here, but it's just not a polite horn. Elon, we need we need a nice horn. That's what we're asking for. That's it it asking. is. I mean, it is because I, I like, I'm one of those people that's like ding ding. You know, I want do do. You know, <laughs> it'd be nice if we had a, a, a way to do that. So I wanted to demonstrate, we're in valet mode, but also brag on or show off the mobile app because this mobile app is truly incredible. Um, what I like about the mobile app, I'll show you the features I use all the time and then we'll come back to the, to the valet mode. When you're in your building, you know, after a workout and your time to go in the car, down here in the south, it's not uncommon for this car to be 116 to 122 degrees when it's sitting out in the sun. Right you can quickly turn on your air conditioner even if the car is you know six miles away i mean you can turn on the air conditioner go ahead and have the car cooled down 
Um, really cool feature. You also have the ability to have the controls. You can see we're in valet mode right now. You can see that by the indicator being flipped there. But think about the fact also that we could open the front trunk, the back trunk, we could start it, we could honk the horn, we could flash the lights. A lot of cool things, instead of being in a parking lot and having to blow your horn to annoy everybody if you were like at a Disney parking lot and couldn't find your car, you could just flash the lights. Or better yet, another thing I like, it gives you the location as well as a Google, Google type view, image, yeah. a Google, Google Earth type view, so you can see exactly where you are on the map and you can zoom in. I mean, really cool feature. Yeah. Um, but let's get back to kind of the thing that, that I was showing is that you can also go into controls and say we had a call from somebody who said, I need you to disable valet mode because I need to get into your frunk or I need to get into your glove box. No problem. Now we're back in a normal mode. That's awesome. Or here's something that happened to me. Went to a park and fly, forgot to put it in valet mode, realized that it was, or uh, here's even better. I put it in valet mode while I was in another state because I was up in Boston. Um, and then um, I also realized they didn't lock my car in the parking lot at the park and fly. Now I'm sure it was in a secure area. I don't trust that. Right, right. So I saw that my car was unlocked in a different state and locked the car because I was able to hit the button and lock the car. I want to talk about some comments that we got and I wanted to clarify because these things, uh, one of them kind of, because it, it, it hit me where we work. I mean, because realize we are fee-only financial advisors. I'm a, I'm a CPA, a certified financial planner. Bo's a, a certified financial planner as well as a chartered financial analyst. And, and by day, we are fee-only wealth managers who work with clients all over the country. And you know, the content for this channel is primarily to also help you make every dollar go a little bit further beyond common sense to make smart financial decisions. So when I get a comment um, from Alexander, no, I didn't say it. Alexandra? Maybe. It could be either or. It says... From a, Alex. A, 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 a channel about personal finance where the host just bought two new cars in the last six months. Your Model 3 review is good. Your finance advice isn't. Ooh, sick burn, Alex. I mean, that kind of that hurt. I mean, because that's, that's getting into... So I want to clarify, and I would encourage Alex, you know... You need to go watch some of our videos on keeping up with the Joneses, on spending. And then I want to borrow from one of our neighbors here in town is that Dave Ramsey has a quote that I love. He says, you got to live like no one else. So in the future, you can live like no one else. And what he's talking about is that if you can start saving early and often and build up that army of dollar bills, that when you get in a situation like I got myself into, realize all my cars were eight. I had an eight-year-old car and I had a 12-year-old car. When you get cars that old, they don't give you a 60-day or 90-day notice that, hey, by the way, Brian, um, you know, on this date, I'm going to kind of start giving you a lot of trouble. <laughs> you're, you're going to want to get rid of me. Right. They, they don't do that. You know, this is the, the peril of driving an old car is you just know at some point you have the unfortunate situation that you have to get rid of it. That's right. Because it's just not safe anymore, and you don't want your wife driving a car that could leave her stranded at the Target shopping center. So... That's what I got into. And then here's the, so I got into with her car, it started burning oil and it started having some, some, some issues with sure. maintenance. So it was time to get rid of that car. Um, and then this car, with, unfortunately with a Tesla, and you guys, they have now opened, well, good thing is they've opened the floodgates. It looks like the numbers are up. You can get a Tesla. You're going to get these things a lot sooner. Sure. When now they're getting close. They're over 5,000 a week in production on these Model 3s. They're, they're supposedly in the next few months going to be over 6,000. Right. That's incredible. But when I got this, or the opportunity, you didn't get a choice. It was either, yes, sir, Mr. Elon Musk, I want my car. Um, it was not one of those things that you wanted to defer. You know, they send you an invitation, right. you you accept it. So yes, I bought two cars within six months of each other, but I was fortunate that I did exactly what Dave Ramsey was talking about. I started saving very young, and you too, Alex, when you get to that point, if you start early enough, you can buy two cars in the same six months and not derail your financial situation because you've got that army of dollar bills behind you. So you too can do it even if it's not your plan. So we, we got some emails that people said, hey, Brian, you didn't open the frunk. So the front trunk is a cool feature and I'm gonna show off and use the actual app to open it. And, it, and one of the cool things when you use the app is it says, are you sure this action will remotely open your front trunk? So we're gonna hit yes. Look at, that. Look at that. It's like magic. 
and there's the frunk. So you could comfortably put a so, small little suitcase, a travel, a carry-on. Sure. And, and I also like, like, this is how nerdy it is. It's also got, if you wanted to put your plastic grocery bags and wanted to keep oh, them from yeah. flying all over the place, you got cool little genius. toggles there. It, genius. Of course it's genius. Now the way you close this, like you would think, and this is not a bad, this is not a nitpick. I don't want anybody to troll us. Look, you close it, and then all you have to do to close it is you put a little pressure on them. I have big fingers, as you can see, say, big fingerprints. Finger <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's okay. I mean, it's um, I wanted to make sure we got a chance to show the frunk. Really surprising on storage space, because one of the things you said, Brian, is you and the family just did a trip to Memphis, and you took this, and so... Uh, you, your wife, your two daughters, and there was plenty of room for everybody's lug, lug not luggage, but we bags. And, and you stuff. bring up a feature that I did not even bring up on the trunk that I have not shown in our previous series too, because I do this, let me tell you this, I call this the Chipotle compartment, because <laughs> I don't want, I, I go get Chipotle to go all the time right. for the family, because it's a crowd favorite, everybody at the house likes Chipotle, so I don't like to put it in the car, because it makes the car smell like Chipotle. But, Tesla is smart enough that they gave us a storage container. It's like a, almost like a, what a minivan would have. Right. Where they, this is what I call the Chipotle container. I put the Chipotle down there, secure it between the, the brackets here, close it up, good to go. Car never smells. So my question was, this car works well for having enough storage for a family of four to take a weekend trip. And you answered me with Chipotle, but the answer is yes. The car for a family of four has enough storage space to be able to it travel. It does incredibly well on road trips. Uh, the, no complaints in that, that area whatsoever. I mean, as you can see, it has lots of trunk space. We also had um, Ricardo Martins. This is what he wrote. He said, so, at the four second mark, he makes the big question for a long review. The answer is no. It's a cheaper, smaller Model S that has been in the market for years. There's absolutely nothing new to this Tesla that has not been around for some time. Here was the question. Is the Model 3 going to change the world? Is it the car that we've all been waiting for? That was the question that was posed. And I think what Ricardo is saying is, nope, it's just a smaller version of the Model S. Nothing new here. Um, I would disagree. Because here's the thing, Model S is revolutionary and, uh, and it changed a lot of things. But here's where the Model 3 has done things even differently. When you get in a Model 3, you will see, you, the first thing people say to me, where are all the buttons? <laughs> I mean, because all you have is a screen. There's not a lot of buttons. You have power windows, and you have a, door, a button to get out. That is it. Yeah. I mean, I even had trouble in the, in the beginning trying to figure out how you unlock, because you just hit the unlock or lock button. Right. But you get, very quickly, you get trained, because I was always the person that, I, I mean, you liked buttons because it was like a gadget. More you felt like the more buttons, more, buttons, more yeah. meant more premium, more more gadgets, more th you know better things that you're doing. Once you drive this car for a while, you realize no, this is the way it should be because you do all the setup at the beginning. You you have all your default settings that you set up, and then it does everything else automatically for you. You're gonna realize how hey, like not having buttons because you know what? When you wash your own car, like I do, because I'm. I'm, I'm, I love the, the enjoyment of watching a car being washed, but also the fact that it saves money. You're going to realize that when you have less buttons, it's less gunk. It's less lint. It's less things that, you know, you don't even know where some of the weird substances that end up in your buttons comes from. You don't have that problem in this car. So I disagree with Ricardo. I think this, this definitely has some revolutionary features. Hey, but heart for the comment, Ricardo. Thank you for that. Bless your heart. <laughs> we have had an absolute blast doing a deeper dive of the features of the Tesla Model 3, as well as just answering your questions and re respond, having an opportunity to respond to your comments. And keep them coming, guys. We love connecting with our, our viewers. And this is, I think you can hopefully sense, we have a passion for educating and also just getting information out there. I mean, that's why the baseline for purpose for this channel is in addition to giving you great Tesla videos, it's also to help you take your money beyond common sense and just stretch it a little bit further than your friends and family and build that financial independence that much sooner. So we wanna thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for even leaving comments. And hey, this is an encouragement. Go ahead and leave us some more comments because I imagine we're gonna be creating more content in the future and love you to be part of the process. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm your host, Brian Preston, joined by Mr. Bo Hansen.